Hi guys, Glad Keeper here. Today we're going to talk about snow blowers. As usual, we have open flames, tractors, and we've got alcoholic beverages. That's how we get things done around Plant Keeper Shop. So what I have here is a couple of snow blowers. Okay. We've got this guy over here. It's a 924-124-2004 model. That was around $1,400. And we've got this guy over here. It's a 921049. And this one is running around $2,400 right now. Take a look at the board over here. Right? Here's our two machines that we're looking at. And the cost. Right? We got a 2004 and a 2022. The 2004 I bought brand new and um, never had a problem with it I recently acquired this guy here from somebody that was escaping the madness of Massachusetts for Florida and they hightailed it out of here so fast that they just wanted to get rid of this machine it was a fantastic deal I couldn't pass it up so I bought it I like Aaron's products and um, so I figured I'd do, do a little review because the big difference, the, the biggest difference between these two machines, as far as I'm concerned, is right here. This is an electronic fuel injection small engine, right? And I'm sure a lot of us wanted to, you know, want to look into that. I was kind of curious about it myself. I've been working on carbureted engines my whole life, and uh, I finally have a chance to work on an EFI small engine. And I've had the covers off this to take a look at things. I had a little bit of an issue with it uh, when I first got it home, but it runs excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at my older machine first. This one here is a, well, it's a 9 horsepower, right? It's a 9 horsepower Tecumseh motor. And it's got, it's a 926 model. So it's got a 26 inch wide bucket. This is a 30, it's a 30 inch wide bucket. What I don't like about this one over here is the bucket is not as high. I know that when I hit the drifts at the end of my driveway from the snow plow, that I need this extra height. This also has the drift breakers on the side, came with it, right? The only thing I've changed on this I put the plastic skid shoes on it because I've got to pave a driveway and I changed out the lamp. I believe it was a halogen for an LED. So it's a uh, it's a much wider light. It's a 5000K, so it's kind of, it's almost like a bluish hue to the uh, to the lamp. Um, both of these machines, these are good ones, right? Cast iron gearbox. This one over here, steel gearbox. The auger pretty much looks the same, right? Only difference I notice this has a support from the gearbox to the housing, the blower housing. This one does not. This, the Impella, in the first stage, well, second stage, um, there's four blades on the Impella there. This unit here has three blades, right? The discharge shoots. Yeah, they look pretty much the same. This machine here, to move the chute back and forth, right, you've got a crank up here. This guy, yeah, it's a little bit different. You've got to reach over. The crank is over here. I've got to admit, I like this a little bit better. Gearing, the same. You know, you got like five speeds forward, and it just locks in. That's all on your, you know, the relationship of the uh, friction disc um, down below. And then you've got two speeds reverse. We got pretty much the same thing over here, right? This is your speed over here. I'll show you the wrong one. This is actually the deflector 
on the shoe and this is your uh, your speeds over here forward reverse um, let's talk about the discharge shoe right you can see that this locks in place I like that I like that feature on this this one over here does not lock in place I actually made this little plastic um, chalk that I stick in here um, this is all based on uh, spring tension underneath there's a spring under here I tightened it up I, I talked it down to the point where it's like you're really jamming it to try to uh, get it to where I want it there's a lot of times where I want this discharge to be almost almost further than 90 degrees right because I don't want to be blowing snow over into my neighbor's yard or sometimes I just want to you know put the snow really close to the machine I don't want the blow back from the uh, if it's really windy out so what happens with this one here because it's just based on friction to hold it in place as the snow comes up the chute it hits this and it starts to do that right and it, it, it just defeats the purpose so I like what they did with this guy the new one where you can actually get an angle it looks like it's below 90 degrees right there a little more maybe 95 degrees um what else do we have going on up here so you've got drive wheels same thing over here right level three drive wheels this is your auger control hasn't changed much heated grips they both have heated grips that's pretty good there's your switch right there looks like they they modified the switch i never had a problem with my switch even though it's open to the elements um you know every now and then i'll throw a little wd-40 on there it never hurts never had a problem with that switch being open like that um this guy over here has uh a couple of other things that are different to than than my uh machine over here my machine my throttle control and choke are down here on the motor primer push button for the electric starter i don't mind this at all here's your key right there to lock it out up here you've got this is your throttle control right here right it's a potentiometer because it's electronic fuel injection so you get a potentiometer to, to adjust the um the speed of the motor basically um this guy here it's a key right it's also a switch you have to turn it over to this position and what that does is it sends power from the little battery that's in here to the pc board to tell the electronic fuel injection we're going to be starting up so this needs uh, the battery under here needs to be charged up if we take a look under here we've got uh well you know what let's take a look at the board for us i got some stuff written down on the board over here and um you know i i think that the major difference is right uh you know you got the carburetor and you've got the electronic fuel injection right electronic fuel injection system the battery battery charger efi harness ecu which is the electronic ignition module electric fuel pump and the throttle body for the um basically it's a uh that's efi also right the, the electronic fuel injection and we'll say e f i yeah there we go so we'll take a look at what's going on on this machine now we know this guy here has a carburetor right we've all been around the block with carburetors we know that deal uh this is what you guys want to see right electronic fuel injection it's all new okay so what we have we've got a small charger that comes with this and it plugs into the wall let me go grab it all right so what we have here we've got this charger plug it into the wall you disconnect this harness right here plug this end into the battery and charge up the battery if the battery needs a charge there's a little green light on here that lights up when the battery's got a full charge the battery is tucked up under here 
This is your ECU, this is your electronic ignition right here, right? And then you got your harness, you can see you've got a harness right there. And this harness runs down, it hits, um, as you know, with an electronic fuel injection motor, you um, not only do you have to get to the throttle body, but you also have to get to a couple of sensors. You know, you're, sensing, you're looking at the RPM, you're also looking at temperature, right? So, you got the potentiometer, you got a harness, the ECU, the battery, the charger, under here, on the gas tank, and I've had these covers off already, affixed to the gas tank is your electric fuel pump. You need an electric fuel pump for this system. And then, over here, under this cover, eh, it's in, you know, you guys have seen this all before, I'm not going to take the covers off right now. You pull this off, and you've got a throttle body, right? takes the place of the carburetor. It's an electronic throttle body, and um, so now what you have, you've got the fuel pump, and you've got a throttle body, you've got a couple of sensors, and you've got a harness that goes around the motor. We can also take a look at, you know, these ratings here. Now everything, oh, we got CCs, foot-pounds, 15 foot-pounds. People look at this and say, oh, it's 15 horsepower. It's not 15 horsepower. What you do is you take this 306, divide it by 35, and you're going to come out with like 8.75 horsepower. There's a formula for converting cc's, which is cubic centimeters, of a cylinder to horsepower. So it's 8.75 horsepower. This is 9 horsepower. Very, very similar in size, the bore of the, uh, of the cylinder. Um, okay, one, one thing I didn't talk about was the auto turn. This also has auto turn steering technology, which is pretty cool. Okay, so when you get to the end of a run, you want to bang a 180, come back in the opposite direction. One wheel will spin faster than the other, depending on which direction you're turning. So it's, a, it's like a steering assist. Pretty cool. I like it. Okay, this guy over here, hey, I got Posi track. Hey. Right? Posi track right here, okay? So I can lock in my differential, have both wheels turning if I need that extra traction. If not, I've got one wheel turning and it makes turning the machine uh, a lot easier. The wheels themselves, pretty much the same size. This one's a little bit more aggressive tread than this. So those are the big differences right there, you know. And uh, so we already we looked at this, right? We know where the components are. We've got several components to take the place of one. Let's take a look at the board. Let's take a look at the board and see what we got. So I'm gonna throw some numbers at you, right? Model 2004 has a carburetor, 2022-23 has electronic fuel injection, if you so desire. So we'll take a look at the battery, right off the bat, battery, $37. Battery charger, was about $30. Bucks. This guy right here, electronic fuel injection harness, 65 dollars. ECU, LTC, this is your electronic control unit. This is the module that's underneath the dash up by your, your controls. Let's take a quick look, the ECU was 185. Oh, getting up there. 185. Electric fuel pump. One forty. This is the big one right here. Throttle body, EFI. What do you think? How much you think it costs? Right? We know how much this guy costs over here. $240. Okay. 
you know, I didn't show the um, the I mean, the potentiometer. There's a couple of sensors. All said and done, with what we have here, seven hundred plus dollars for these parts, right? It's probably more like eight hundred dollars when you get to the uh, the extra harnesses and the sensors that are remote on the engine. Uh, we come over here, carburetor, how much is carburetor, right? You get a knockoff carburetor for $30, right? I wouldn't even do that. I would rebuild what I have. I would rebuild the Tecumseh carburetor and just, just get a kit, right? In the middle of a snowstorm, if um, I have a problem with this guy right here, you know what? I can find it. I can find the problem. I can't fix it though, right? I'm going to be stuck and I can be stuck for days. The throttle body, same thing, right? These components would have to get replaced. Now, I got the service manual with this, so I know what's involved. And there's about 150 test points you have to go through. You have to test all these components to figure out what's wrong with it. I'm a licensed electrician. I don't want to be doing that in the middle of a snowstorm. I can do it, but I really, you know, even if I find the problem, I probably won't be able to fix it then and there when it's snowing, right? This guy over here, if this craps out on me in the middle of a snowstorm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it apart, and I'm going to fix it on the spot. I might drag it in the garage to do it, but I am going to fix it. Then and there, I'll have the thing running. So, when I look at the two, I have to make a decision, and I'll be perfectly honest, you might call me old school, this is the machine I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep the carbureted 2004 model, and I'm going to get rid of this guy right here. Okay? So, if anybody out there is looking for a really, really nice fuel-injected errands, I've got one for sale. After looking at these numbers, I think I need that drink. <laughs>